The HP Envy X360 2016 has been my daily driver for about a year and a half. Now, is its successor good enough to take that seat? Yeah, definitely. But let me tell you why. When I first saw the new design, I, to be honest, I didn't really care. I understood that it makes sense from HP's perspective to have the streamlined with small bezels and all, but eh. The 2016 version was good enough looking for me, so as long as the internals offered the same kind of bang for my buck, I didn't really care. Then, I saw it. I felt it. I don't know how to explain it, but it feels more premium, more professional. The new one is by far much better looking and makes me feel like I got my money's worth already just from the looks alone. The sides are thinner, making the device a little bit more compact. Corners are sharper, removing that cheap rounded look. And even the new logo looks sleek and premium now. It really feels like a pro consumer laptop, which caught me off guard at first, but in the end, I'm actually really happy about it. Build quality is just as good as last year's, if not better. There are two noticeable improvements. First of all, the rubber feet at the bottom are strips instead of circles, so they're more likely to stay in place. After about eight to nine months of use, I noticed that occasionally when I took my laptop out of my bag, one of the feet will have moved a bit. The new ones seem much more secure so far. There's also less flex, especially in the screen. When I picked up the old laptop when it was closed, I could definitely feel the flex, but I mean, I didn't really mind it. But this new model feels much sturdier. Overall, the feel of the laptop is an improvement I didn't really know I needed, but that is more than welcome. The vents in the back are also much larger, meaning more airflow. IO is also improved from last year, but not very much. On the left side, we have HDMI out, USB 3.0 type A, power button, and a headphone jack. On the right, we have charging port, which should be type C, but whatever, it's fine, I'm not salty. A USB 3.0 type A, a volume rocker, USB 3.1 type C, and an SD card slot. Those, those last two are definitely my favorite to have. The only real difference from last year is that the ports were moved around a bit, the Type-C port was upgraded to include DisplayPort and stuff, A plus there, and the power button is less mushy, so that, combined with its new location a little further down, should make it harder to push on accident. Now on to the specs. Specs is probably the biggest upgrade in this model, something I am very excited about. We now have a quad-core Ryzen 5 2500U CPU, a Vega 8 GPU, 8 gigs of DDR4-2400 in dual channel, a 15-inch 1080p IPS LCD touchscreen, and a 55.8 watt-hour battery. This translates to an incredible performance difference between the two models. If you want to know more about that, go check out my Benchmarks video where I compare the two. Now, I did say 8 gigs of RAM, but this is another one of the improvements of this laptop. There are more options. The model I got, yes, does come with 8 gigs of dual channel memory, but you can also get a 12 gig and 16 gig option. Awesome. And storage, I didn't even mention, because there are so many different options, ranging from a one terabyte hard drive all the way up to a one terabyte NVMe SSD. I personally opted for the 256 gig NVMe SSD because it was on the cheaper side, still offered plenty of enough storage for what I would personally need from it, and the NVMe SSD is lightning fast. And in practice, it is lightning fast. I turn on the computer, within 10 seconds, I am in and good to go. Now, another thing I didn't realize about hard drives before was that the sluggish part is not really booting it up. It's after you log on, waiting for it to be actually ready to use takes an eternity. This new model, immediately. I turn it on within 10 seconds, the lock screen pops up, Windows Hello recognizes my face, and I'll get more into Windows Hello later, and then boom, I am ready to go. A plus HP. Dual channel memory is a great addition. In fact, many of the comments in my videos on the first model were people trying to tell me that dual channel memory is better for APUs, which use the DRAM as their VRAM. 
Well, you can calm down now because we have it. Cooling seems to be improved, likely thanks to a more advanced CPU thermal design from AMD and those new larger vents that I mentioned. Overall, the fan spins up way less than the old model, which is great. Battery life is also great. The old model got about four to six hours of battery life at a time, while this new one is getting about six to nine hours, both of those usually in the middle of their respective ranges. Now this isn't the double battery life that AMD promised us, but I don't think anyone expected that, and this is still a great improvement. Now, that being said, the battery could still be a bit bigger, and according to this picture of the internals from Remix Reviews, there's room for one. But anyways, so while I definitely enjoy the battery life improvements, HP needs to stop being afraid of putting in bigger batteries. There is no such thing as too much battery life. The keyboard is the same as last year's, so no complaints there. It's still my favorite laptop keyboard to type on, period. And the trackpad still supports all the gestures, feel greats, and seems pretty precise to me. But that being said, there are a few changes. First of all, it's, it's a bit shorter, which I am not a fan of. Second, the click feels more stable and more satisfying. That is something I mentioned was not great about the 2016 model, but in the end I just end up doing tap to click instead of a full click anyway, so I guess it doesn't really matter to me. It's still nice to have though. The screen is just as good, if not better than last year's. The colors seem a bit more vivid, but only if you pay attention to both side by side, and maybe that's just me. I don't know, it's still great. Fantastic screen, no complaints from me there. Tablet mode still sucks, no surprise there. That's due to the wedge formed by the laptop's shape, but whatever, I never use that function anyways, just the touchscreen. Speaking of which, it works! There's not much to say about the touchscreen, it, it does its job and that's that. Uh, this is the old webcam and microphone for reference, it's okay I guess, webcam is 720p, the microphone catches a lot of noise and is has gotten me complaints when I've joined Discord with it. This is the new one. The uh, webcam is bumped up to 1080p. It's a bit better, but it's still pretty grainy. The colors, it's more orangish, pinkish, and the microphone sounds the same. So overall, I guess it's a bit better, but the, the microphone definitely needs to be improved. Speakers are just as great as last year, if not better. I usually listen to audio with headphones, but the speakers are still there and offer great quality. Now, to talk about some features that I never really knew that I needed. Windows Hello. The face unlock feature in this laptop is fast, reliable, and surprisingly super convenient. Now, I never really minded putting in my password, especially since it was just a muscle memory and it was just a few clicks away. But Windows Hello face unlock is just really nice to have. Who knew? In terms of issues, I, I don't really have any. I mean, I did mention that the hinge was a little loose last time around, and that's improved, but it's still kind of loose. But it's kind of understandable, though. I mean, they want a tight and sturdy hinge, of course, without sacrificing the ability to open the laptop with one hand, though. So in the end, I think they found a good balance here. So good job, HP, I guess. Other than that, really, eh. The only changes I would make at this point, to be honest, would be to add a bigger battery like I mentioned earlier, and more Type-C. Always more Type-C. Type-C is good. And that includes charging the laptop. Okay, okay. Here are, here are my suggestions for an improved I.O. On the left side, USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 with charging and everything. USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A, HDMI, and a headphone jack. On the right, Another USB Type-C 3.1 Gen 2 with charging and everything, so you can do charging, DisplayPort, anything from either side. And then a USB 3.1 Gen 1 Type-A and an SD card reader. But, hey, that's just my suggestions personally. It's still good I.O., but, you know, if you want to make it a little better HP, you can, you can always add those things. All in all, this laptop is an improvement over last year's in almost every way. Everything that was great was carried over, and the improvements are much welcome. HP, I feel they really put some thought into this, not only making changes that were asked for or expected, but also anticipating what the user might need, and adding unexpected 
yet surprisingly beneficial improvements, like Windows Hello or the improved build quality. Yes, as I mentioned in the beginning, the 2017 model of the HP Envy X360 AMD Edition is my new daily driver from now on, replacing its predecessor. The new performance is really what drives it over the edge for me personally, and I'm very excited to be using it on a day-to-day -day basis and in places like CES 2018, where I won't have to wait an hour for videos to export anymore. Yes! So excited about that. But anyways, that's it for this video. If you liked it, don't forget to leave a like, and don't forget to subscribe to see more cool videos like this one. Also, don't forget to check out my Benchmarks video, where I show off AMD Ryzen Mobile's new improved performance over last year's Bristol Ridge. If you have any questions or concerns about the laptop that you want me to address, leave them in the comment below. And if you're thinking of getting it or you have anything to say about this laptop, also leave it in the comments below. Also, don't forget to follow me on Twitter. That's where you can get the first updates for everything that happens when I first order the laptop, for teases for benchmarks, etc. All were there, so go follow me there. And go follow Remix Reviews on Twitter. He also got this laptop, and we talked a lot about our opinions on it. Um, our impressions, and he also supplied me with that picture of the internals that I showed earlier. So go follow him as well. And yeah, that's it for this video. I will see you guys in the next one.